So, uh, we have been looking at methods for solving nonlinear algebraic equations and initially we looked at this successive substitutions very very briefly. So, which are uh, derivative free methods no gradient calculation and then I moved to this univariate Newton's method basically uh, a variant called secant method and then uh, the motivation for doing this uh, is to look at a method which is intermediate between univariate method and a multivariate method. This method is called as Wegstein iterations and then we will move on to modifications of the Newton's method. So, the derivation of Newton's method we have already done using Taylor series ex expansion. So, this is application of Taylor series expansion, but uh, there are many more modifications uh, which are useful for implementing in a practical scenario. So, I will discuss about them today. Okay. So, first is this Newton's uh, first is this secant method. So, secant method I want to solve for f of x equal to 0, x belongs to R, univariate problem I want to solve for f of x equal to 0 and the way this is done is uh, So, this is uh, update rule for the Newton's method and then in secant method you just approximate this you replace the derivatives not you replace this derivative at is approximated as f at x We approximate this instead of instead of using exact derivative, you use last two it the current the the uh, last two iterations, and then you uh, find the next next guess. So to kick off secant method, you need two initial guesses, and now what I want to do is come up with a multivariate analog of secant method ok. So, now my problem is so this is this is multivariate secant method. So, uh, it's it's known as Wegstein iterations or Wegstein method, and what I'm going to do now here is I want to solve for f of x equal to zero, where x belongs to R n, and f is a n cross one function vector. So this is n cross one function vector. Okay, this is uh, let us say there is some way by which we can arrange this set of equations. So, we essentially have f i x equal to 0, x belongs to R n, okay, i going from 1 to, to n, okay. And let us say we have some way of arranging this equations into some way of arranging these equations as uh, 
एक्स आई और एक्स वी हैव लेट्स से सम वे ऑफ अरेंजिंग दिस इक्वेशन एज एक्स आई माइनस जी आई एक्स इक्वल टू एफ आई एक्स इक्वल टू जीरो ओके आई हैव सम वे ऑफ अरेंजिंग दिस इन टू दिस काइंड ऑफ अ फॉर्म एक्स आई माइनस अ सिंपलेस्ट वे कुड बी जस्ट एड यू नो इफ आई इफ आई स्टार्ट फ्रॉम दिस इफ आई स्टार्ट फ्रॉम दिस इफ आई एड एक्स आई प्लस एफ आई एक्स इफ आई इफ आई रिलाइट इट लाइक दिस आई कुड कॉल दिस एज जी आई एक्स आई कुड कॉल दिस एज जी आई एक्स ओके सो बेसिकली आई वॉन्ट टू रीअरेंज इट आई वॉन्ट टू रीअरेंज इट एज सम एक्स आई माइनस ओके दिस इज जस्ट एडिंग एंड सब्ट्रैक्टिंग एक्स आई ऑन बोथ साइड ओके सो दिस वाई वाई एम पुटिंग इन दिस फॉर्म बिकॉज अ पर्टिकुलर वे दिस मेथड इज इंप्लीमेंटेड दैट इज द रीजन वाई आई एम पुटिंग इन टू दिस फॉर्म बट बट वॉट यू विल सी सून इज दैट दिस मेथड इज नथिंग बट अ मल्टी वेरिएबल एनोलॉग ऑफ द सी कैंड मेथड ओके सो नाउ वॉट आई एम गोन टू डू इज समथिंग लाइक दिस okay i am going to define i am going to define this si i'm going to define this slope okay not exactly partial derivative but this is some kind of a crude derivative of g si is a crude derivative of g with respect to xi okay is a crude derivative of g with respect to xi uh or the rate of change with respect to xi that's how you can look at it okay okay now i'm going to apply the secant method i'm going to apply secant method to ith equation okay i'm going to apply secant method to the ith equation i have these equations fi fi x equal to 0 okay just just for the time being keep this si to the side okay why am i defining this si will become clear soon now i'm going to apply okay now look at this this is ith component of x vector okay the new one is old value of the i component plus a correction which is like newton which is like secant method applied only to the scalar variable sorry uh, applied only to the scalar function fi fi is a scalar function f capital f is the vector function fi is the component of the the vector function f okay so i am taking one scalar function i am one taking one scalar function i th scalar function okay and this is if you if you look carefully this is fi xk minus fi xk minus 1 divided by this one upon that is become right so uh this derivative has been computed basically this derivative has been computed for the i th this derivative has been computed for the ith function ith function with respect to ith element in x okay and that's how i am going to generate if you do this if you do this this is nothing but a wegstein method 
if you generate iterations like this see what is the advantage of this what is the advantage of doing this way over uh, Newton's method first of all you do not require explicit derivative calculations this is only an approximation how many such derivatives suppose you call this as a derivative approximation how many such derivative approximations you need equal to number of equations ok compare with the Newton's method you need to compute Jacobian how many elements in the Jacobian n cross n right so if you have 100 equations to solve you have to compute derivatives which are 100 cross 100 if you have 1000 equations to solve you have to compute numerical derivative even if you compute it numerically it is 1000 cross 1000 ok huge number of calculations whereas here you have less number of calculations so this is somewhere in between it is not now uh, it does use some kind of rate rate information but not all possible rates ok some partial rate information is used but not all possible rates so this is computationally more uh, you know uh, let us say attractive because it requires less calculations ok so it does use some kind of rate information but not fully ok some partial rate information is used now this is not the way it is normally reported or implemented uh, ok a slight variation is done not 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 in terms of the formula but in terms of the way it is implemented now which is what I am going to now this derivative is same as now f i is x i minus g i right I am going to substitute that here so if I substitute that here it will be x i k minus x i k minus 1 minus ok let us develop a slightly let us develop a slightly simplified notation then the things will become so let us call g i k is defined as g i of x k ok so that if g i k minus 1 which means g i evaluated at x k minus 1 and so on ok so with this notation with this notation this derivative this derivative here I am going to write this as x i k minus x i k minus 1 minus g i k divided by x i k which is equal to 1 minus which is equal to 1 minus how was s i k defined see this this will give you 1 right and this divided by this is s i k so this formula which i have here now ok in terms of s i k ok this can be written as x i k plus 1 is equal to x i k ok x i k now what is f i minus x i k minus g i k what is f i k this is x i k minus we have defined it like this into 1 upon 1 minus s i k same formula I have just rewritten in in a different form ok same formula I have written in a different form well if if you were to implement if I just go back here if you were to implement this formula as it is it is fine nothing wrong with it that itself that that will be Wegstein method why I am doing this is because I want to clamp some values I want to introduce some heuristics into the uh, 
into my iterations. So that is where uh, I am just doing this rearrangement. Okay. Uh, so this particular equation now I can rearrange this as follows. Okay. I will just rearrange that equation, nothing else, just put it, okay. Now I am going to define, I am going to define a new, I am going to define another variable which is omega i k which is 1 upon 1 minus s i k. I am going to introduce a new variable omega i k which, which is 1 upon 1 minus s i k okay. and in terms of omega i k I am going to rewrite this as 1 minus omega i k x i k plus omega i k Okay. The reason I am doing this is to draw some parallel with successive substitution with relaxation method. This is like relaxation iterations. It's like relaxation iteration. Okay. Except the omega in relaxation is typically fixed. Here omega is not fixed. Omega is changing with the iterations from one iteration to the other iteration. Omega is changing. Okay. So time varying omega it is like successive substitution with relaxation okay and now what we are going to do this is this is some kind of a thumb rule to make uh, your computations uh, typically we try to uh, restrict omega. We try to restrict omega between 0 and some alpha, okay. Suggested value for this alpha is, is 5. Typically, you restrict this between 0 to 5, okay. So, you are doing something like a relaxation method, successive substitutions with variable omega, okay, and omega you want to restrict between some. Uh, number between 0 and 5 okay so uh, all this jugglery I, I have done because I wanted to put this limit okay I wanted to put this limit that's why I'm doing all this jugglery otherwise I could have uh, so this this uh, multivariate version of secant method together with this limit imposed on omega this is called as Wegstein iterations. This is very popular method, and if you go to uh, many of these uh, plant-wide steady-state simulation softwares like Aspen or Hisis, you will find one of the options they will give is Wegstein iterations. Okay, Wegstein iterations can be performed even if the function f i is not differentiable. You don't require differentiability here. You just require evaluation of functions at two points and divided by, you know, you may have uh, discontinuities when you are writing uh, equations for uh, some unit operation, okay. You may have different equations in different uh, regions depending upon the operating region and so on. If flooding occurs, you may have some different equation. If normal operation, you may have some different equations. You can have in chemical plants, you can have these kind of uh, situations. So, uh, we actually uh, many times prefer this uh, as an in between uh, way of doing calculations between completely gradient based and uh, completely gradient free, okay. So, this is somewhere in between. So, given a large scale problem, what I would do is well, I would first try Wegstein method. If it works, great, okay. Does not work, probably I should look for something else. Okay, so because this is computationally more 
you know friendly so is this clear any doubt about this okay let's move on to now the newtons method which we have looked at uh, we have derived from Taylor series approximations multivariate Taylor series approximation then we also uh, you know did some exercises in which we solved some problems using newtons method right so uh, so you already know something about newtons method now uh, what what more is there to it so the next one uh, the next one is on our on our radar is newtons method and you will say well i already know about newtons method i want to solve for f of x equal to 0 x belongs to r n and then all all that you do is at each time point is you solve for this uh, let us define this Jacobian at time k to make my uh, writing simple I am going to use this terminology j k, j k is dou f by dou x evaluated at x equal to x k okay and then uh, one more notation that I am going to introduce here is uh, f k this is function vector f evaluated at x k okay I am just introducing this notation so that uh, my subsequent derivations become simpler in notation okay just remember that f superscript k is nothing but function f evaluated at x k okay so my my formula which you have implemented is x k plus 1 is equal to x k plus delta x k and delta x k is computed by solving this linear algebraic equation right this is what you know right now as Newton's method is not it this is what well one variant which is often implemented rather than doing this is uh, to make this this equation well conditioned you pre multiply you pre multiply this by j k transpose ok. So, instead of doing this equation ok often often this is done In fact, uh, the tutorial, computing tutorial which I have given you, I asked you to modify this step like this and then solve this resulting problem using Gauss Seidel method, right. Why, why, what is the reason? This become positive definite, Gauss Seidel method is guaranteed to converge, okay. In general, when we work with positive definite matrices, uh, matrices are well conditioned easier to work with positive definite matrices. So, this is instead of instead of this step we often implement this step There's one more modification this is called as damped Newton method ok ok. So, what we do here is that uh, so one modification I told you is this another modification is we change this this particular equation we modify it to x k plus 1 is equal to x k plus lambda times so lambda is chosen between 0 and 1 ok. Now, what is the reason first of all remember when you took Newton's step when you took Newton's step it was based on local linearization of function vector f of x k right. How did we take this step? It was based on the local linearization this j k is a local 
jacobian local derivative okay so actually actually what should happen is that when you when you take this step okay the function vector okay should reduce because i want to go to f of x equal to 0 when i go from xk to xk plus 1 you know this function vector should reduce now uh, a step which is based on linearization okay may not ensure that at the new point actually the function is reducing because you have done a local approximation of a nonlinear function made some decision of mu based on the local approximation okay this may not lead to a good value of xk plus 1 see what should happen i should move towards the solution right should move towards the solution isn't it now what is the guarantee that if i if i make some decision based on the local slope alone it will lead to a it will lead to you know decrease or it will lead to uh, a smaller value of f okay uh, to put it in little more mathematical words see what should happen i want that f of norm of f k plus 1 this should be less than norm of you agree with me when i take a new step if i evaluate the function vector at the new point see i want to finally go to f x equal to 0 right when i make a new step okay so this this function evaluation at the new step that is x k plus 1 okay should actually reduce okay as when compared to this now this may not happen if i set lambda equal to 1 it may not happen okay because delta x has been determined using local slope okay so what is the way out okay so why should we choose lambda less than 1 let us look at the rational behind it so essentially i choose a lambda okay by some means uh, such that this condition that is function evaluated at k plus 1 is less than function evaluated at k okay you could do this okay let me let me go back here before before i move on to the rational so what i want to do is first i check lambda equal to 1 if for lambda equal to 1 if this condition is satisfied i am happy okay i accept i accept delta x choose lambda equal to 1 and proceed with the next iteration if it doesn't happen okay i will reduce lambda i will reduce lambda to say 0.9 for example i'll give you a very crude way of doing it i'll reduce it to 0.9 then for lambda equal to 0.9 delta x is fixed i'm not going to change delta x has been found by you know using the jacobian okay so i'm going to reduce lambda i'll reduce lambda and check whether this condition is satisfied if not i'll further reduce lambda i'll go on reducing lambda till this condition is satisfied moment i get one lambda for which this condition is met okay i will take that step and so how this is how this is done one algorithm for doing this is called as armijo line search and i'm not going to go into details of that i have given this here in the notes uh, it's in table 1 damp newton algorithm with armijo line search okay so those are details as to how do you how do you select iteratively lambda what i want to do on the board is not the algorithm as to how to select lambda such that this is met so that is matter of implementation i want to give the rational why this is done okay this is done this lambda which is less than 1 is done because we are doing taylor series approximation and taylor series approximation is actually valid in a small neighborhood okay taylor series approximation is valid in a small neighborhood and then this lambda actually helps us to find out what is that neighborhood where you should apply taylor series approximation okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to look at this function I am going to look at this function phi which is I am going to look at this function okay 
एफ इज माई फंक्शन वैक्टर एफ के ट्रांसपोज वॉट इज दिस दिस इज नथिंग बट हाफ एफ के प्लस वन टू स्क्वेर राइट नथिंग बट नॉम नॉम टू स्क्वेर आई एम गोइंग टू लुक एट दिस फंक्शन ओके नाउ दिस पर्टिकुलर फंक्शन दिस पर्टिकुलर फंक्शन इज नथिंग बट हाफ एफ ऑफ एक्स के प्लस लैमडा डेल्टा एक्स के ट्रांसपोज एक्चुअली द रॉ मेथड विच वी हैव स्टडीड इन द बिगिनिंग एंड विच यू हैव इंप्लीमेंटेड फॉर सम सिंपल प्रॉब्लम वर्क ओनली फॉर सिंपल केसेस ओके टू मेक इट वर्क फॉर अ लार्ज साइज कॉम्प्लेक्स प्रॉब्लम टू डू ऑल काइंड ऑफ ट्रिक्स ओके सो दिस दिस इज अ स्केलर फंक्शन this is a scalar function phi is a scalar function okay i am going to now expand phi in the neighborhood of xk okay i am going to expand phi in the neighborhood of xk so my phi x k plus 1 is equal to phi so this taylor's theorem is like foundation you know it it helps you everywhere wherever wherever you move in applied engineering mathematics is one of the cornerstones okay now now when you when you are writing it like this what is unknown to you here only lambda delta x we have already calculated okay xk is known to us okay so this vector is known this vector is known i am just now worried about choosing lambda correctly okay so lambda do phi by do lambda plus lambda square by 2 do 2 phi by do lambda square and so on i am expanding this as a function of right so now what should happen is phi xk minus 1 minus phi xk what should this quantity be positive or negative it should be negative this quantity should be negative this is this is nothing but look here look here this is if i were to square this and subtract okay i'll get this quantity i'm just multiplying by half half is not going to make much difference half is a positive quantity so this quantity okay is what i'm worried about now we know that delta xk is equal to minus jk inverse fk and lambda times do phi by do lambda this is same as lambda times uh grad phi xk transpose delta xk just check this i am just doing i am just doing derivatives by uh in succession i first differentiate phi with respect to entire quantity and then then see this is this is do phi by do x into do x by do lambda okay do phi by do x into do x by do lambda i am not writing that just skipping the in between step okay 